to Vale Road, I'm Alexandra and today I'm very excited about this video because it's something I've been wanting to share with you for ages, either on a blog post or finally a video which is sharing all my favourite sewing books and at the end I'll throw in some of my favourite fashion books as well because I love all the books and I just think that there's so much to learn from books and their history and they're fantastic, you know, like sewing and fashion obviously we've had for thousands of years and it's so interesting and I love all the different time periods and there's just so much to learn about sewing. It is something that is passed on through generation to generation and it is also something that that doesn't fundamentally change. It is sort of all the same ideas and techniques and ways of doing things. So I really think that investing in some really good sewing books is so important for anyone who wants to take up sewing um, as a really first class hobby uh, because there is so much to learn and it's great to always have them to reference back to. They're the internet is brilliant and I love being able to share my own sewing tricks and tutorials and whatnot but they're definitely books which have probably everything we would ever need to know in, in them but that definitely does not stop me from buying lots and lots of sewing books so I'm very excited to share some of my top favourites that, that have really helped me with learning how to sew from home by myself. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, I've got all my books laid out here in front of me. So I'm going to start with this one. This one, uh, one of our really good family friends gave this to me back in high school and it's such a beautiful book. I love the cover on it uh, with all the rainbow colours and everything. It's just gorgeous. So this is the Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Sewing and this is like the complete guide. It is definitely a sewing bible and it's beautiful. I'm not sure when it was written, obviously it's quite old. Wow, so this was written in 1977 so it's got a bit of age on it uh, but it is amazing. It's got everything from hems and other finishes, fastenings, waistlines and belts, making and applying pockets, necklines and collars, basic construction techniques, sleeves, sleeve finishes and cuffs, techniques of tailoring, sewing for men and children, it's interesting, that's like the second last chapter and it's very small. Obviously not important to us. <laughs> Sorry, sewing for children is very important. Sewing for men, they can learn that themselves. And sewing for the home. So it is a really brilliant book. It's just, it's so detailed with everything. So it's amazing. It's got so many diagrams and pictures, which I think is incredible for books. Sometimes people can really lack on the uh, visuals on how to do things and just rely on words. Uh, so this book is awesome for all of that. So this definitely helped me. I think I might have been like 14 or 15 when uh, when our friend gave this to me. So it was really good to have this. I think, I think that you really need to have a book that you can rely on when you're home alone and sewing and you don't have anyone to help you and you've got something that you can look onto and you can work it out, you know, when they've got absolutely everything in it. Uh, yeah, so I definitely, if you ever come across this in a secondhand bookshop or if it might still be in print, I'm sure there's probably even an updated version now by the Reader's Digest. Keep an eye out for that because I think it is really really good. But leading on from that book my sister then wanted to buy me some sewing books and she said it was really important that I had like a textbook and so she bought me this awesome absolutely awesome and, and this is called Professional Sewing Techniques and it's written by Julie Cole and Sharon I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong Sazcore? Chazcore? And uh, it is awesome. This is sort of like the updated version I would say of the Reader's Digest uh, and this has got everything in it again um, and it's like a textbook and this is probably this is probably a little bit more fashion rather than home sewing so this is probably more taking all of those techniques that the Reader's Digest teaches you with making pockets and sleeves and etc and turning it into like more creative ways of how you could play with those techniques and details which is really really cool so, so I'll just read out a few chapters there's a lot of chapters in this one so I'll just sort of breeze through this. Uh, so there's Introduction to Stabilizers, Fabricating a Stable Foundation. That is chapter one, so obviously stabilizers are very important. That is another thing on my list which I'm trying to focus more on and work out a bit better. I'm realizing there are a few dresses I've been making really recently which definitely need a stabilizer and it's not until like it's almost done that I realize that and I should be realizing that from the start. So stabilizers, very important, especially as they mentioned first chapter of this book. Uh, then from there we've got darts and it's got all the different types of darts and how to shape the body. Uh, pockets of course again, joining seam, joining it all together with seams, tucks and pleats tailoring a texture, zippers fastening your way into the garment, ruffles and flounces feminine and flirty, 
waistband planning the horizontal edge. So yes, you can see this one's a little bit more on the creative side. So then we've also got collars silhouetting the neck, cuffs and other wrist finishes encircling the wrist, sleeves rounding off the arm, hems defining the length, lining covering the inner surface, closures closing the garment, and chapter 18 is finishing touches all sewn up. So yeah, there's some fantastic, brilliant techniques and ideas in this book. And again, they have plenty of diagrams, probably not quite as detailed as the Reader's Digest. Uh, but yes, also very, very helpful. This is the book that really got me to sewing invisible zippers properly. So um, I would definitely recommend it for that. Or if you don't want to buy the book, I have a video on how to sew invisible zippers. So I'll leave a card up there. Uh, yeah, but it is, it's gorgeous and it's got some really cute little fashion drawings in it and yeah, I would definitely also highly recommend this strip. I would, I would also definitely highly recommend this book. So pretty much from high school, after I finished high school, because that was my, when I had my last professional home ec sewing class, this was the book that I had to get me through the next, what was it, five years? No, that doesn't sound right. The next three years until I got a job in the sewing industry and started learning practically uh, on the on the job. But yeah, this book is fantastic and I absolutely love it. One day I just sat down and I finally read it from cover to cover and I just couldn't believe how much there was to learn. And it do definitely didn't all sink in, but I know that I've always got it there for when I need it. So if I ever come across something that I've got no idea or I'm completely lost uh, or a pattern doesn't make sense, this book will cover all surfaces. Nope, that sounds wrong. Cover all seams. <laughs> and then another book that I picked up which was from the big Lifeline secondhand book fair. If you're in Australia I definitely keep my eye out for one of those. I'd never been to one before. My friend took me along and it was amazing. I found the fashion and sewing section and I just got lost in it and the pile of books that I came out with is incredible. So there's a lot of books which I haven't actually read from cover to cover so I haven't included them in this video. Hopefully later in the year um, once I've actually sat down and read them I will do another video including those books probably. But, but there is one book which I absolutely adore and rely on now in my sewing library and it is Couture, The Art of Fine Sewing and it's written by Roberta Carr but I think it was like a collaboration of lots of beautiful uh, ateliers and seamstresses and this book is amazing. So this book was written in 1993 so the fashions are very out there and I love it like 80s flounces, shoulder pads, big puffy sleeves, all that goodness you can see it there it is amazing. Don't let the old fashions put you off because I can assure you this book is full of gems like this is this is sewing. This is like next level sewing and techniques and it is incredible. Um, I wish I could just be as patient to put all of these techniques into sewing every time I made something but just look at the dresses they're so gorgeous uh, and it just really goes through like once you've learned how to sew and you really want to take your sewing to the next level there are so many extra little things that you need to learn and you know how to grade your seams how to sew princess seams professionally all about ironing how to, making sure that you always cut your fabric on the grain all of those things which is so important and the biggest tip out of this book is reduce bulk wherever possible so they're really doing like beautiful fine hems and fine seams and trimming down and just making sure everything is beautifully finished and it's also great because it doesn't rely on all the big technology and machines and all of that sort of thing it's really it's couture like hook couture so it's gorgeous it's all like the hand sewing and those beautiful techniques that the professionals and the top designers use so it's really all about like the art of sewing and making sewing like so far beyond just clothes but works of art so again if you do see this anywhere I would highly recommend uh, on the cover of the book it said that it was $45 I picked it up for $6 I don't think I've ever gotten such a bargain it is so so brilliant and then the next book I wanted to share is this really cute little book. So I actually never went to fashion school and I picked this book up in Dimmicks a few years ago, I think like back in 2016. Uh, and it is brilliant. It's really good. It's called 101 Things I Learned in Fashion School. And it's written by Alfredo Cabre Cabrera, Cabrera with Matthew Frederick. And it is so good. It's very brief, like very just short and sweet, like really important, just easy little facts and quotes from fashion uh, telling you about fabrics, 
styles, like the really basic styles, the fashion calendar through the year. I really love this book, it's just got some fantastic pointers on fashion in general and sewing of course as well, it's got a few bits of information in there. It's got some great quotes, I love the quote that says uh, something along the lines of like, Elsa Scrappoelli had so much taste and all of it bad and Coco Chanel had very little taste but all of it good and I think that's a fantastic quote. I love Elsa Scrappoelli, I really don't think her taste was that bad, it was fantastic, it was brilliant, it was weird uh, but obviously Coco Chanel is the one that we all remember for her tweed suits and classic cuts and styles that make any woman feel incredible. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I really like that quote. I thought it was really good. There is another quote in here which I've quoted on my Instagram which says that invisible zippers are like fine crystal, should only be used for special occasions, which I completely disagree with. I think an invisible zipper is so important on any garment that you want to make really easy and beautifully fitted. Uh, so anyway, maybe read that one with a grain of salt. But I really, really uh, like this book as well and I think it's a great easy, easy read. Uh, it's a very, very quick read for anyone who might be interested in the fashion industry on a wider scale or just as very cute little coffee table books to maybe spark the interest in your friends of the fashion industry. I would recommend this. I think it's really cute. And, and to come back on it uh, years later this year when I started rereading it, I really enjoyed it all the same with the fun little quotes and, and for the facts that are so easily shared and easy to take in, I do, do recommend that little book. Now for a couple of little style books which I really really enjoyed, uh, we've got this one which is called The Little Black Book of Style written by Nina Garcia, of course from Project Runaway and the editor-in-chief of Elle magazine in the US. I actually really enjoyed this book. I picked this book up, I was kind of like, oh Nina Garcia, I really like her, I think she's got great taste, um, I'd be interested to see what she has to say and it's interesting that she wrote a book. Uh, and I really loved this book. Anyone who loves fashion or clothes or your wardrobe, I would highly recommend this. It's got fantastic things all about fabrics and key pieces of keeping in your wardrobe, how to dress, the importance of having a tailor or a seamstress to alter all of your clothes, which I absolutely agree with, of course, and uh, some fantastic interviews in the back of the book from close friends of hers who are fashion designers, examples, Ralph Lauren and Diane von Fustenberg. Also got a great section on what you should be wearing to special events, which is brilliant, and I love all of the designer quotes or famous quotes on fashion throughout the book, which are brilliant, and I definitely, if you want a really fun little read about fashion or creating your style, I would highly recommend this. Um, it was interesting when I bought it, I thought I'll just flick through it and then I'll probably give it away because I also picked this up at the Lifeline uh, book exchange and so it was quite cheap so I thought oh yeah I'll just hold on to that for a little bit but once I finished reading it I thought oh no I'm keeping this one in my collection it is so good and just another great thing to reference back to uh, whenever you feel maybe a little bit lost with your style when you feel like your style's not really going anywhere or you need some fresh inspiration I would definitely recommend this it's got lots of great ideas and of course ways that you can find fashion inspiration from movies and films and books of course and all of those great places so I did really enjoy that one hats off to Nina Garcia she knows what she is talking about and then another little style book this is probably like the first style book I really read that I thoroughly enjoyed which wasn't like a style book which was telling you how to be like a lady or whatnot this was like a style book that was incredibly funny and enjoyable to read and it was just it's just Alexa Chung. Like, I absolutely love her. Sorry, I need to tell you the book. It's Alexa Chung, It. You know, written by the It Girl for all the wannabe It Girls. And tell me, it was fantastic. It's got some great life lessons in there about heartbreak as well. Uh, I love Alex Turner. You know, Alexa Chung would be someone who I always look up to as wishing I could have her style. But her ex-boyfriend Alex Turner, I also wish I could have his style too. He's fantastic. I love him and I love his songs, of course. Arctic Monkeys, one of my favourite bands. Uh, anyway, stop fangirling, Alex. And <laughs> let's talk about the book. Again, similar to Nina Garcia's book, it's got lots of great references to movies and TV shows which have stellar fashion and fashion inspiration. Uh, again, it's got Alexa Chung discovering her own style and lots of great recommendations on like photographers and cultures that have influenced her ideas of fashion. And for the book being so fun and light-hearted and very very funny I think it is a really really good book and it will be a book I will be coming back to again and again just to have a little pick-me-up or again fashion inspiration and ideas is brilliant. And next on to some biographies and an autobiography. I really want to get into reading more biographies and autobiographies and especially documentaries like I've only really I haven't really watched many fashion documentaries, but they are the things that I absolutely love. Like September issue, that was 
one of the big reasons I got into sewing and into fashion to begin with because I absolutely loved that documentary so again if you want to look up that that is brilliant the September issue uh, the September issue is a documentary which focuses on Anna Winter and Grace Coddington also plays a major part in it uh, in the creation of the September issue of course for US Vogue and it is so brilliant it was so interesting and it's one of those things that really opens up your eyes to all the different possibilities and different jobs in the fashion industry and how much it influences culture and lifestyle and pretty much you know nearly everybody's lives across the globe because fashion does hold such a huge power on who we are as individuals and how we present ourselves to the world and so I really recommend that and the other documentary I absolutely love is Dior and I and it is amazing and that's about Raph Simmons and his first haw couture show at Christian Dior when he took over creative as creative director and I absolutely love that I've watched that so many times brilliant oh and another fashion documentary sorry off got off line here but they all kind of connect uh, is the future of fashion hosted by Alexa Chung on the British Vogue YouTube channel. I have also watched that plenty of times. Again, it was a big eye-opening moment to the fashion industry and all the possibilities and jobs and opportunities which exist and how it is so huge. And uh, yeah, I really, really love that documentary. So I'd highly recommend that and that's free on YouTube. So easy access. So, so an autobiography is Dior by Dior by Christian Dior and it is brilliant. I really wanted this book. This book was on my reading list for ages and then at the Lifeline Book Fair, can you believe it, I found it secondhand and I don't think I could ever be luckier so this is incredibly precious and it's also very precious because I read this on the road trip that I took with my dad last year, which was July in 2019, um, up to Weeper. So it was a big, big road trip and I read this book and I just love the contrast because I was like out there working in the dirt dressed as a man and I was reading Dior by Dior, being completely mesmerized by fashion in the 50s and early 60s and it is just brilliant and just how he created such a name for himself and he was and he was only the creative director of his own brand for like 10 years and yet look at the influence of first coming out with the new look and then yeah Yves Saint Laurent and John Galliano and Raph Simmons all the people to follow who have just led his brand and made it so incredible I know that I quote Christian Dior a lot on my Instagram but he is someone I just look up to immensely and I love his vision and his creativity and his love for what he did uh, and this book is fantastic it is so interesting and, but also his praise that he gives to all of the people who work around him and he knows that they're the people who help make his brand what it is and it's so interesting hearing about the customers coming in and the fittings and then finally showing the show and how he was such a private and shy person but being Dior, being Christian Dior, he had to play the part and go to the US and go to England and meet the meet the royals and all those brilliant things that happened in his life. Uh, so I would also recommend this if you ever get your hands on this book. I just could not recommend it high enough. I think anybody can read this book. Whether you're interested in fashion or not, it is fantastic. And then another biography which I've just finished recently is this amazing, amazing book. This is called Chanel, Her Life, Her World, The Woman Behind the Brand, written by Edmund Charles Rue. I hope I said that right. Maybe Charles Rue or Charles Rue? I'm not sure. This book is incredible. This isn't just like a book about Chanel. This isn't just like, oh, Coco Chanel was born here and lived there and created pajamas. This is like history. So much history. I, there's so much I don't know about European history. Like all the wars that went down in Russia, man, they were always fighting. And all the wars in France and Napoleon and uh, the First World War. Like I don't think Chanel ever dated a man who wasn't important. Like it goes through her whole dating history, like the main men that she dated in her life. And wow, they were all incredible. Like starting with Boy, obviously this famous Boy bag that she named after him. Uh, he was like one of the first people who suggested a European Union. Did you know that? And then she also dated a man from Russia for 12 months, Dimitri. That's like the real life Dimitri uh, from the Anastasia cartoon that we all loved when we were children. Chanel dated him. That's what you find out in this book. It is amazing. But this author is incredible. He doesn't just like tell you things factually. It is all so incredibly beautifully described, um, which really 
which really actually I struggled to get into the book because I'm really not into descriptions that much, I'd rather read something very factual, uh, but but once I learned to appreciate how incredible it was and how brilliant his writing and his mind and the amount of information that he could put into this book and make it feel like a novel but it was actually all real is brilliant and um, absolutely loved it, yay. All I could to sum this book up, I would probably just say dense. It is very dense. I feel like I probably only absorbed like 20% of this book, got some of the general idea, but I think I'd love to read this in the years to come again and again, and I think I would learn so much about everything and not just fashion. But uh, the thing is the book is about Chanel, I better say something about her. Uh, this book made me realise how smart Chanel was. She was a true businesswoman. She was on the ball with things and there's a lot of things she probably doesn't give other people credit for which were actually their ideas but she had the nous to make those things happen and make them fashions and make them trends and and what I really admire is her craftsmanship I think that like the way they describe her like no one could make a sleeve like Chanel could make a sleeve fall and her skill is just non-comparable I think to anybody else I think we have a lot of fashion designers who can make a beautiful sketch and a beautiful drawing like Christian Dior or Karl Lagerfeld but Coco Chanel actually worked right up until the day that she died and so her skills as a tailoress or as a seamstress were phenomenal and of course that is absolutely to be admired especially by me so I do love it. Um, fun fact about me, I'm born on the 19th of August, Coco Chanel is also born on the 19th of August so I do like that little connection that I have. And then lastly I wanted to share a few fashion books because I love these sort of books and they're so beautiful and these are like the sort of books that I just want to collect all of them from all of the famous designers and I love that they put these together and I think they are magic. So beautiful reference books for just when you're feeling a little bit lost and you want to feel inspired and you want to go back in time and you want to just like admire the brilliant minds of fashion. These are fantastic. So the first one I've got here is Valentino. In Brisbane back in 2010 they had an exhibition of Valentino and it was themes and variations and that is probably like the biggest single thing that really got me into sewing and into fashion. Seeing those dresses were just beautiful. Absolutely love them. So this book is a reference to all of those dresses that we saw and um, they are just incredible. Is these images and the details, like, oh, I just love it. Valentino has a way of making such incredible clothes. I think that his clothes are very artistic, but in the same way, they're so wearable and, like, like he's so graphic with colours and cuts and textures. I know that we all love Pier Paolo, he is brilliant. We cannot deny him of that, but we cannot forget the original man, Valentino himself. And I feel so lucky to have this book because I'm not quite sure if it was just a special edition for that Brisbane exhibition, uh, but it is so beautiful. So thank you, Mum. You did nail the Christmas present that year. I love this book. And another present nailed was my 21st birthday, and this is what my best friend got me. And this is the Alexander McQueen Unseen. Alexander McQueen is obviously so famous, uh, but he wasn't really someone that I had taken a huge interest in his fashion. I think I was old enough to remember the news when he died, when he passed away so tragically. Uh, but I didn't know much of his fashion shows, I was still too young to have ever paid any attention to those. Uh, still too much of a tomboy. But yeah, this book just opened my eyes to his world and his collections. like. Look at this and the details, like these are like the, these are the backstage photographs and we've got the model having a smoke there and the makeup artist or the, the hair, hairstylist is fixing the hair. Um, but yeah, the photos are gorgeous and the details and there's such brilliant write-ups on the collections that he created and the message behind his collections. Um, so those are so interesting. Obviously he was a brilliant conceptual designer, uh, making sometimes very controversial topics and producing incredible works of art and fashions with those topics to send his own message down the catwalk with his models. Uh, I think that there is fashion designing and then there is a true talent of being a storyteller and an artist and Lee McQueen was certainly all three of those. He was so brilliant. So I really love this book, it is so precious and so beautiful, so anyone who would like to have their eyes open to the world of Alexander McQueen, I think this is a fantastic, 
fantastic book to really just appreciate why he was so renowned in his work and why we should always remember him. And finally, the last book I'm sharing is a book that I picked up from the Dior exhibition in Melbourne, which was I think back in 2017. I was so lucky to get to go down one weekend on my own and see the exhibition. It was, in, it was absolutely amazing. I loved it. Just like, I loved it. Like there's just something about seeing all of those famous clothes up close in the real, you know, like Nicole Kidman had worn it, Miranda Kerr's wedding dress, there's all of the beautiful dresses that you know from the catwalks of Galliano and Raph Simmons, it was just amazing. So also in regards to that exhibition I also picked up this poster which I had framed and this one, I'm sorry, I think my light is reflecting in it, you can't really see it so well, but it was a little postcard which I also got framed which is gorgeous. I think that was from a Dior perfume advertisement and then this one I think is quite a famous image but I love it and I love the colours in both those pictures so yes. So for the book I got the Dior book and again I'm not sure if this was a special edition book to the exhibition um, but I knew I definitely had to buy it. So this is Dior, The House of Dior, 70 Years of Hawkature and it's by the National Gallery of Victoria so I think it was a special edition. Uh, but again this is awesome, it is just, it's got so many beautiful images of all of the beautiful clothes from the house of Dior through the years, um, through all the different designers. And this is probably my favourite picture from the book, which is all the lovely, beautiful ladies working in the atelier. Oh, it's so amazing. And it is all so beautiful and it has so much information on the house of Dior and how it was all started and the beautiful people who worked there and the designers and all of the incredible clothes. So I feel very special to also have this book in my collection. So they're all my favourite sewing and fashion books. I really hope that you enjoyed this sort of video. Uh, if you have any book recommendations, please leave a comment down below. I would love to check them out. And of course, best wishes on all your sewing adventures. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Thank you so much. Bye bye.